To become a London black cab driver, I had to do an in-depth test called the knowledge. But how does it stack up against modern sat-navs? Let's go and find out. Well, outside the pewter as well. I haven't checked the route as of yet. This is just me as though someone's got in the cab and just said, oh, driver, take me to, uh, we want to go to, where are we going? London Bridge Hospital. Let's go there. So I've not actually seen what the Google route would be. I'm not going to have that taint my abilities to get there. I've not even driven through the city today to work out, you know, where the traffic could be. Very busy here in the city of London. The city ain't dead by any stretch of the imagination. Look, it's uh, clearly lunchtime here in the city of London. God, I haven't seen it this busy in years. So my choice of route, I'm going to do a right into Bread Street, uh, left onto Queen Victoria Street, I think that's then the start of. And then we're just going to forward all the way down into Cannon Street. So there's a few other reasons why sat navs generally suck. First off, you can't put ambiguous destinations into the sat nav. So if you get a tourist who's completely bewildered and perplexed about where they are in London, and they explain, oh, we're sort of near a Boots, but it's near a tube station, but our hotel is just down the road from there. All of a sudden, you can start piecing some of these clues together. So I'm thinking, well, highly likely, could be High Street Ken, you've got the Boots on the corner there, go down Wright's Lane, and bosh, you've got Holiday and Express direct in front of you. I can already see there's a bit of traffic building up there. What this does, this cuts the lights at New Change. There's a couple of blokes with high visies looking down at his van there. So it's not good, he's looking down at the tire. I hope he's not broke down there. In which case, the sat nav has most certainly won if he has broke down. He's definitely out of the driver's seat. This is what I mean about London when people say, oh, is there like an optimum route, you know, that you can just, why don't we put all the cabbies routes into like some sort of sat nav? What is the best route one time is the worst route another time. This guy's broke down at the end here. And there's only, including the guy that's broken down and myself, there's only three bits of uh, vehicles that are stuck in this traffic. Because there's only three vehicles, you have to rely upon all three of them to be using a sat nav to tell you that there is traffic here. No one else would be informed, informed of this. And of course, inputting, how quickly you can take that information from a passenger and then put it into the sat nav, then for it to deliver you a route and then to have a little look at that route and before you're on your way. If someone gives me a location at the window, by the time they've got in the cab, parked their butt on the seat, I've already calculated in my head, I know roughly where we're gonna be going. What if someone just shows you an address on the screen and then you've got to look at the screen Take that in, grab your own phone out, put that in the sat nav. It's all time delay when you could be already on the way getting the passenger there. Well, with the driver's door open, I don't think I'm going to be getting anywhere. Nope. And now the driver's moving off. Not ideal. I'm still confident with my route that I will be able to beat the sat nav on this one. I've not checked it. We'll do it retrospectively once we get to London Bridge Hospital. My choices of getting to London Bridge are pretty limited. I can't go through Bank Junction, can't necessarily go around it because that then involves going to Bishopsgate. I could go over Blackfriars, but that's quite a bit more in that direction. I honestly think this is probably the worst traffic I've ever done on Cannon Street before. <laughs> it might be over 16 minutes into this journey. I'm still adamant we're gonna beat the sat-nav. I've not even looked at the sat-nav route yet, but I'm adamant I've got this. Stay tuned, because there's a pretty plucky reason as to why. I've got, I'm behind three city sightseeing buses. Sightseeing buses will do about five, 10 mile an hour there to get the view of Tower Bridge. But I guess there's no law on going slow. I know you can fail driving lessons and tests for not making progress. Left on Duke Street Hill, forward Tooley Street, and we'll see if uh, that little bit of Montague Close is open. Nice, we'll get left in here. And London Bridge Hospital is here. So we'll say we're here now. Grand old sum of 20 minutes 40. So let's round that up to 21 minutes. What does the Google say? Grand total of 20 minutes. So it's bang on what I did. And I did a shorter route. And I got stuck behind a van that broke down in front of me. Now, you can see on screen now, there are some other insane disastrous options. There's 21 minutes if we drop down onto Queen Victoria Street, using Friday Street. 
There's some crazy ass one that takes us all the way up to Old Street, Commercial Street, and over Tower Bridge and back on ourselves. What was the key thing about the route I just did? Well, only taxis, buses, and cycles are allowed over London Bridge and able to get the left turn into Duke Street Hill during the hours of seven till seven. And in fact, after seven, normal cars can't turn left into Duke Street Hill. Obviously with this particular route, there's things that I can do as a taxi driver that the normal car driver can't. And of course, the sat is not gonna display that information because it's aimed at the average road user. Now, as we've seen, sat navs can be wildly unpredictable, both in terms of time and distance. And there's something I bring out of my cab every single day that's a little bit more predictable. That is Y food. Now that's a complete coincidence matching my, uh, my garments. Y food is a complete ready to drink meal that I always keep either in my bag or in the boot so I can have them at a moment's notice. Nature of the job and even today, I have no idea where I'm gonna end up and when I'm gonna end up there. This is one of the OG flavors, smooth vanilla. They're made from long life milk so you don't have to keep them refrigerated and they have a really good macronutrient profile. Basically, good amounts of carbs, fats and protein. This one bottle alone contains 26 vitamins and minerals. So I know that by having a Y food, I'm not compromising on my overall health. It's a tasty drink, but it's nutritionally complete. And it gets even better because Y food are exclusively giving you 10% off all of your orders with them. Just use my link in the description down below or the code taxi-youtube. That applies site-wide, absolutely everything. So go wild with it. Now, let's go and try a route that can be achieved in any vehicle. I wanted to pick something that had a lot of variables to it. If I'm just stuck on the embankment, there's only like two options. You go through the city or the embankment. Here, there's loads of options. I don't even know what I'm gonna do, but I do know where we're gonna end up, and we're gonna end up in the Boltons. So, let's give it a go. What I'm gonna do with this one, we're gonna look at the route afterwards, because I don't want the route to influence my thinking. Time is four o'clock, let's get started. One minute past four. The key thing I wanna say about SatNav, there is not one ultimate route. There might be in your local area because stuff doesn't vary that much, but in London it is a lot more variable. I've not driven this route today. I don't even fully know the way I wanna do it. There is a lot of options, a lot of options. That's why I like working Kensington and Chelsea actually. There's almost too many options. This isn't too bad so far. Just trying to think what, I mean, I don't really like thinking about what the sat nav would do, but sometimes it will just, Google particularly will stick you on the big roads. Local knowledge. If someone wants to go to Le Meridian Hotel at Piccadilly and we're approaching from say, City of London, well, I know it's probably most likely gonna be best for me to go up Regent Street St. James's, left Piccadilly, drop them on the south side and say, look, there's the hotel over there. If we've come from the Sloan Square direction and we're heading towards Victoria Station, come down Elizabeth Street, left Buckingham Palace Road, and drop them there, just outside Google. There you go, there's the hole in the wall for you. Saves so having to go all the way around the gyre atri, which could add another fiver onto the journey and passengers on their way much quicker. Even considerations like, is there a decent sized curb? If you've got someone with mobility issues, it's not that easy to jump in and out of the step of a cab. If you've got an older TX4, you need a good size curb for the ramp to have less of an incline to get a disabled passenger in there. So you need to be able to think of these things in advance to ensure that you get your passenger safely to the location. So I'm just thinking, yeah, all the way through, left Walton. Walton can get a little bit sticky because of sort of oncoming traffic and stuff. And then you're left out on the Fulham Road and I'm not gonna drive too far from that, I don't think. You don't wanna go any lower. But I have these inbuilt buffers that basically say, oh, okay, when this condition happens, I'll take X route. When this condition happens, I'll take Y route. And you just kind of calibrate them over the years. Like now, I might better get the left here because this builds up for this traffic light here. It depends, we'll get through this traffic light. We probably can't get through here because of where this van is. Until 4.45, it's five past four. So technically I can't drive down that road anyway. See, that's the thing, if, if, if five cabs approach that set of lights, well, none of them are gonna be using sat navs. So there is no physical data anywhere that proves there are five cabs there. So the person who's pulled up in a car behind, their sat navs basically saying, yeah, this junction's really clear. But he doesn't know there's five cabs in front of him because they're not using sat navs. And finally, multiple drops. Three passengers get in and say, driver, we want Fenchurch Street, Waterloo Station and Victoria Station. Can you do them in the right order, please? 
how are you going to even try and input that into the sat nav to try and work out what is the most optimum way of completing that journey? And like here, here's another example. Like my dad would sometimes try and use ways to plan his routes in advance. But the problem with ways is that it's so dependent on live conditions. It's really difficult, especially in London, to really do stuff in advance. You can do it. There is a little feature where you can sort of drag down and select, oh, I'm going to leave tomorrow at 10 o'clock. But it has to give you such a wide variance because the, the, there is such a huge variance in London. The other thing you can't ever factor for is lights. It's green now, but you could hit red after red after red. And of course, that compounds over the length of a road. You could hit green the whole way down. You just never know. That's what I mean, like if that was clear down there, no pedestrians, I can see that no one's gonna use the zebra crossing. You can just carry on going straight. It's just chopping up the route a little bit. Gilston Road. Bosch. It leads us straight into the Boltons, one of the most prime areas to live in London. Belgrave Square to the Boltons. It was about 12 minutes or so. 11 minutes. 17 seconds. What would Google say? Let's go back to the Google. 12 minutes. Bosh. Obviously, where we found a little bit of time, we're just doing a right into Evelyn and Roland Gardens here. Now, this route was, of course, just me doing it on the fly, just using my brain. But what if I looked at the route beforehand using the sat nav and then used that to inform my decision? We're in St. James's Square and we're going to go to St. Mark's Square, which is uh, up near Primrose Hill. Now, I'm going to use this sat-nav. I don't necessarily have to take the route it's going to suggest. It's like telling someone who speaks native Chinese to maybe use Google Translate. They don't need to. In the same way, I don't need to use a sat-nav because I I've learned London inside out, right? But we can use it to kind of help better our skills. So, it's saying 22 minutes and I should go up Regent Street. I don't think that's a good idea. So, with that in mind, we're going to give it a go. Let's get my um, timer started and let's go. My main reason against the sat-nav is that it's... Again, London is hugely variable. There's a set of circumstances that are happening today that are completely unique to any other time condition place. We're w mid -week, half two. By the way, criteria of hiring a line bike, you must wear over here over ear headphones. That's just what you have to do. Thing is, if I get in the left-hand lane to go all that Regent Street, I have to sit in all that traffic. If I get in the right-hand lane, I can go into Soho and use Wardour Street. And I think that's gonna be a real nice alternative rather than sitting in Regent Street. Now, I hear some of you screaming, what about Waze? Well, <laughs> what about it? There's a couple of things to bear in mind with Waze. Number one, Ways, ways. I've had someone get in my cab before and I was driving around the Fulham area and they said, driver, I don't mind if you use Waze. In fact, I prefer if you use Waze. So I put it on and it starts wiggling me around some of these little back streets, Whittingstall Street, Lettuce Street, and it brings you out onto Munster Road. The problem with Waze is that it gives everyone the ability to drive like someone who is very local to that area. Like all the little local streets in your home area, you'll know them inside out better than anyone else who's been there. But Waze gives people that ability. And I would argue that it's apps like Waze that have led to the introduction of low traffic neighborhoods because everyone can cut through the local rat runs, not just the local. Also, you have the added problem that a local rat run or a cut through is no longer any good if everyone is doing it. It's like navigating the walkways on the London Underground. Many people will know more efficient ways of getting around if you ignore the signs and have a little bit of insider knowledge. But if everyone did that, the system's not designed for that. So it would create holdups because more and more people would be trying to squeeze through those narrow corridors and routes they shouldn't be taking. Same goes for ways and all those little streets in Fulham. I found that every time I approached from behind a parked car, there'd be another car coming in the opposite direction and I'd soon have to give way again. So it's this really quite frustrating pattern of driving where you have to stop, give way, let a car come through, then you move on, then it's just not fun. So I would generally avoid ways. Often when I'm out driving, it's kind of like a problem solving puzzle based upon past experience. So if I've been somewhere 
and there's a little bit of traffic there from you know two hours ago well i think well maybe that traffic's died down maybe traffic's picked up and got worse we will see things come up on group pages you know you might just speak with a, a taxi driver next to you yesterday i was coming along piccadilly towards piccadilly circus up here wasn't a soul or any traffic about it was about half nine i even spoke with my passenger about how quiet it was we turned up Sackville Street into Vigo Street so I could go up Regent Street because he wanted to go into Mayfair somewhere and I got stuck behind a bus not just any bus a broken down bus and I was stuck there and the guy in the back was saying look this must be some sort of a joke I was like well, no like it's just this one circumstance that's happened right now one comment I've had as well is that Waze has a taxi feature is this any good well, what the taxi feature does is that it allows me access to roads that are, of course, taxis only. So, Chelsea Harbour Drive, as an example. If you try going through there in a normal car, you're approached with a barrier. The barrier won't open unless you're a hackney carriage driver, a bus, or you have a permit for that barrier to open. So it includes roads like this. The only issue with taxi mode is that you have to rely upon all the taxi drivers to be using Waze at that exact time to give you accurate information. For example, if 100 black cab drivers decided to sit in one particular stretch of bus lane on the Marylebone Road, Waze would not know that because it hasn't got the data set because not all the drivers are using Waze taxi mode. So it's only as good as the data that goes in. It comes back to this idea of variables. The more people that use this technology, the more accurate that it becomes. By virtue, Waze has to send traffic into unknown areas for it to be able to gauge how busy that area is. So in a weird way of looking, it will actually send you into traffic to gauge how bad that traffic is. It's kind of crude, but it's of course how it aggregates all the data. Now, let's get back to this drive. I haven't really amazingly thought this route through. I'm just thinking Wardour Street, because that gets me away from Regent Street. So the actual final part, you know, once we get to the very end of Wardour Street, I don't know, it's still in my head. It's still kind of a bit of a blank canvas because I like to be, you can sometimes plan, you have a main plan, but then you can be reactive. I've now got to make a decision here. Do I want to do Poland, Great Portland Street and wiggle my way up? I think primarily I want to get to Albany Street because that gives me two options whether I go through the park or I can just carry on going up Albany Street. But again, I can look at this length of traffic here at these lights. I'm thinking we're probably not going to get through these in one green. I think we're going to get stuck at the next red. If I'd have gone Poland Street, there'd be no traffic lights on there. We, oh no, this guy's put his toe down, so we're good, we're good. We go through, lovely, plenty of time. And this reversal of Burner Streets works wonders now because you can just go straight the way up and we're gonna get one of my favorites, which is Mass Owl Street. And you've got to remember as well was that this wasn't even suggested as a route on Google Maps. So it's not a case of just Google just getting it wrong. It's just a case of me going, hmm, I think I can do a bit better there. Right, the South Street cuts out this bottom bit of Great Titchfield here, because otherwise you get forced like a one-way system. No traffic lights here, so therefore, it's just however clear these roads are. Now, there's a man up here with some cones. I'm not liking the look of that. Is he shutting it or is he letting me through? He's letting me through, I think. Cheers, mate. A little bit busy at the top here at Great Portland Street. And also, just a little bit of local knowledge. Knowing which lane to be in or which lanes you can use, can all make the difference if we're using time as our only variable and i still have options here if albany street's a bit heavy it can get a bit heavy towards the top i could duck into the park and come back out throughout the whole route my brain is still thinking of all the available options so as said i can get into the park because on route passenger might say oh tom i don't know how they know my name they might say tom can you take me up to swiss cottage sure no problem sir and we just go straight into the park and go around Swiss Cottage at the bottom there. Even now, how often does a lorry come out of 20 Squadron Barracks? I've never seen that. I think the message I'm trying to preach here is that every journey is different and that there is no one-size-fits-all problem to this. Nice. Well, there's St Mark's Church. So, I make this St Mark's Square. The time is... 19 minutes and 47 seconds. I have, in essence, created time, a whole two minutes and 10 seconds over the former route. Now, sat-navs mainly focus on time, but I would argue there is a much more important variable, money. 
To find out exactly how taxi drivers are saving you guys money, check out this video over here.